Hey guys, welcome to Bethel Online. My name is Jason, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad you decided to make us a part of your weekend. No matter who you are, where you come from, we're so glad you're here. Our vision is to be a safe place for real people to encounter the real Jesus and experience real change. Our hope and our prayer is that no matter who you are or what you've been through, you know that you are loved and you are wanted here. We would love to get to know you better and help you connect with all that's going on. You can do this by going to our website at www.bethel.us or by downloading the Bethel app. You can find our app by searching Bethel Putco in your app store. Both online and in the app, you can fill out digital connection card. It only takes a minute and it'll help us know how to serve you better. Another way you can connect today is through giving. Your generosity at Bethel directly impacts God's mission to radically change people's lives in Putnam County and beyond. Through the ministries of Bethel and the many local and regional organizations we support, people are able to see the grace of God and how much He loves them. You can always give on our website at Bethel.us forward slash give or in the Bethel app. Thank you for partnering with us and making a difference. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. Know that you are wanted and welcome here, and you are loved. I hope you all have a great day. Good morning, and welcome to Bethel Online. I'm so excited this morning for the message that I have for you. Today's a new day for Bethel. We are stepping out in bold belief, and I want to invite you into a new season of bold belief. God has been doing incredible things in the life of our church. We believe God has even more and more bold steps for our church moving forward. And today marks the beginning of those steps. I can't wait to share with you our vision for moving forward and the message today. It is my prayer for you that this five-week series will help you step into a new day in your personal walk of faith. I want to invite you to bold belief. As a church, we're choosing to be bold in our faith and bold in our future. What's up, Bethel? Today I want to invite you into bold belief. Bethel has a long history of bold belief. In 1841, nearly 180 years ago, a few bold people made a decision to build a place where they could help people encounter the good news of Jesus Christ. Just 14 years ago, Bethel made another bold decision to move our focus outward, to be more bold in our outreach to Putnam County. Over the past 12 years, nearly 400 people have made a decision to follow Jesus. Bethel moved from one service to two services, then nearly 10 years ago, Bethel made the bold decision to open a second campus. Even through a major pandemic, God continued to bless our efforts. Bethel's attendance has grown from 70 to nearly 520 people. Our children's ministry has grown from three to 138 just this past week. Due to our continued growth and forward moving vision, the time has come for the next move of bold belief. We believe that when real people encounter the real Jesus, real change happens. Bold Belief is a two-year generosity initiative through which we will strengthen the ministry plan of Bethel while launching to build a new sending place for generations to come. This is a bold vision that will require each of us to have bold belief. We are choosing bold belief in our now with a financial goal of $1,340,000. The first half of our Bold Belief initiative is to strengthen the ministry plan of Bethel for the next two years, ensuring that we continue to grow followers of Jesus while loving and connecting our community to who Jesus is, while we actively make plans for a new church home. Discipleship in our community is just as important now as ever. We're choosing Bold Belief in our next with a financial goal of $1 million. With a growing church body and a physical need for space, we have to plan boldly for the future of our church. 
It is time to move forward with a mission and vision in a place that we can call our own. The second component of Bethel's bold belief is construction of a new permanent home for Bethel where we will launch into our next season of ministry. Bold belief has a couple goals. The bold belief goals are a primary goal of 100% all in. In this bold belief initiative, we want every person who calls Bethel their church home to be all in. There's something special that happens when God's people come together to do something bold in his name. This is time for each of us to ask God the sacrificial commitment he would have us make and do just that. If you have never taken the first step of choosing generosity within the church family, I cannot wait to see how God grows you through your commitment. Our total giving goal for this giving initiative is $2,340,000. We are trusting God to move through His people to invest $2.3 million over these next two years to accomplish the vision He's given us. Bold belief in our now $1,340,000 and bold belief in our next at $1 million. Church, we can do this, but we can only do it together. So what's next? First, pray. Pray that God will work in the hearts of his people at Bethel and that we will listen with the intent to obey. Second, give. The primary goal of this initiative is 100% participation. That begins with your decision to listen to God and make a sacrificial commitment to this bold belief initiative. That will take your faith to a whole new level in your generosity. Support. We also need you to stand with us in support of this initiative and lend your influence of others to do the same. Celebrate. God is going to do some amazing things as we launch this initiative. Let us be poised and ready to celebrate all of these in a big way. My own family is ready to commit sacrificially. Our staff, our board, and our leaders are ready to commit in a sacrificial way. Now I'm asking you to move boldly. I cannot wait to see what God does in our church, our personal lives, and throughout this community as we move first in bold belief. Let's go, Bethel. All right, so let's go. First off, there are a couple things you're gonna need in the next five weeks. You can pick these up in person at, at Deer Meadow Elementary School at our nine or 10.30 service over the next five weeks. You can pick one of these up at the Crossroads Campus in Fillmore. These are a workbook that will follow along with this series and follow along with this giving initiative. The second is a commitment card. This card we want you to pray over over these next few weeks to see what God is leading you to do and contribute as a part of our church here at Bethel. So why bold belief? You see, it's one thing to step in to faith and trust in God and have a relationship. We can learn a lot about God by stepping into a relationship with him. He can alter our eternity. He can alter our future. But there's something else that happens when we step into bold belief. And I believe our church has a long history of stepping boldly into bold belief. I believe individually we grow as, a, we grow as individuals when we step out boldly. That if you listen to the stories of those who have followed Jesus, the moments in which they surrendered and stepped out, those moments grow them drastically. And I can't wait to see what God wants to do in your life and my life and in the life of our church as we step out boldly. There's a story in Luke chapter 5 about a couple guys, a few guys that decide together they're going to make a bold decision based on their bold belief in what Jesus can do with their boldness. There's a story in Luke chapter 5, and it begins in verse 17. It says, one day, as he was teaching, Jesus is teaching, Pharisees and religion teachers were sitting around. They were sitting around while there was a massive need around them. As a matter of fact, just outside, uh, probably the doors of where they were at, there were people in need and people 
uh, who needed help and healing and people who needed, needed to experience some redemption in their life. But they, they had come from nearly every village in Galilee and Judea, even as far away as Jerusalem, to be there. The healing of power, the healing power of God was on him. So these people are around and they're in the presence of Jesus and he's doing some healing. And then some men arrive carrying a paraplegic on a stretcher. They were looking for a way to get into the house and set him before Jesus. When they couldn't find a way in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof, removed some tiles and let him down in the middle of everyone. How heartbreaking it must have been as they boldly got their buddy who was nearly dead weight and unable to carry himself to the place where Jesus was doing the healing work. And the crowd was so thick of people who had already encountered Jesus and had already heard about Jesus that there was no room for their friend to encounter Jesus. You see, at Bethel, we believe when real people encounter the real Jesus, it can change absolutely anything. And we want to be a church that removes obstacles for people getting to Jesus. These men dug in with bold belief to get their buddy to Jesus. It says they went up on the roof and they removed some tiles. Man, that's friends. Imagine the owner of the home as dirt and ceiling tile began to move and fall on the midst of the religious people. The religious people likely experienced some dirt falling on them because of the bold belief of these men. And, and, and the homeowner had to have wondered who's going to fix the hole. But these men were not about to let the formality of the dirt and the ceiling tile and the roof tile get in the way of their buddy getting to encounter Jesus. Their, their buddy was unable to walk and, and he had lived with this and this had been a part of his life and, and they saw the problem as did probably many of the religious people who were there, as did probably many of the teachers who walked by people daily who were unable to care for themselves. And in this moment, though, these men chose a different route. Rather than to look and just see it, these men began to boldly move. And they took their buddy up on the roof and, and they let him down in the middle of everyone right in front of Jesus. They removed obstacles for their friend who couldn't remove the obstacles himself. They made an encounter with Jesus more available to their friend. And I love this part of the verse. It says, impressed by their bold belief, he, Jesus said, friend, I forgive your sins. I love that Jesus is impressed by their bold belief. There are very few stories or situations where it seems that Jesus is impressed by people, he doesn't seem overly impressed by the religious people, the religion teachers who know a lot. He doesn't seem overly impressed by a lot of people's accomplishments, but the scripture says he's impressed by their bold belief. I don't know about you, but when Jesus looks at my life, I want him to see that I was fearless enough to have bold belief. When he looks at our church, I want Jesus to see a church that's willing to step out in bold belief, willing to get our hands dirty, willing to get in the middle of the mess, and sometimes even be impacted by the mess that's created to get people to him. Jesus was impressed by their bold belief. That set off the religion scholars and Pharisees buzzing. Who does he think he is? That's blasphemous talk. God and only God can, can forgive sins. And they were right. God was the one who could forgive sins, but God was right in their midst doing what only God could do. And they missed it while these men who stepped up into bold belief are going to experience something life-changing. The man who is lowered down into the room is going to absolutely be transformed because he encounters Jesus. And the hearts of these men who had walked by injured people and hurting people and the, the hearts of these religious scholars were going to be impacted by what they would also see here because of the boldness of these men and the goodness of God. In verse 22, it says, Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking. And he said, why all this gossipy whispering? Which is simpler? 
to say I forgive your sins or to stay, get up and walk. Well, just so it's clear, I'm the son of man and authorized to do either or both. Now he spoke directly to the paraplegic, get up, take your bedroll and go home. Can you imagine how impossible these words had been for this man before he encountered Jesus? How many times he willed himself to be able to walk? How many times he went to sleep with the hope that maybe tomorrow would be a different day? But because of the boldness of his friends and now because of the presence of Jesus, without a moment's hesitation, the scripture says, he did it. He got up, he took his blanket, and left for home. He was giving glory to God all the way home. This man picked up the thing that had carried him most of his life, the thing that he had laid on and had probably become as synonymous with his life as, as, as his body. He picked up and carried his blanket that had formerly been a piece of his identity and rather than focusing on his being stuck, he was able to experience the freedom of walking. He went home, and as he went, he gave glory to God all the way. You see, when you've experienced the healing of God, your reaction to him changes. Not only did he experience a physical transformation, he experienced a personal, internal transformation from hopeless to one filled with hope and praise. It said the people, the people in the room, they rubbed their eyes. I think they were like, well, what did I just see here? Like, this has been a reality of this man's life. We've seen him struggle to get around. And, and now it's not true because he encountered Jesus. Because these men who we kind of scoffed at uh, lowered, boldly lowered him down into the presence of Jesus. He's transformed and we are amazed. It says they also gave glory to God. The boldness of these men impacted the man they lowered, but it also impacted the people who didn't quite get yet what Jesus was doing. Awestruck, they said, we've never seen anything like that. I believe as we step out into bold belief, it's going to impact those whose lives are healed and, and those whose, whose hearts are transformed, but it's going to impact those of us who already have a relationship with Jesus. As we step into bold belief and get to be a part of this moment, can you imagine the empowerment these men felt having got their one friend to Jesus, now see a need for all that would need to experience Jesus. In this story, we see real people. I mean, we see the religious people and the religious teachers and those who are just on the fringes listening. And we see the man who needs healing. And we see the men who, who want to bring their friend to Jesus. And we, we see a picture of Jesus that says, bring those to me who are broken. And I have the ability to change things. And we see Jesus do just that. And we live in a world today that's not much different. There are real people in the church who God wants to do a great work through. There are people in our community who God wants to do a work in. There is healing to be had, and Jesus is perfectly capable as people encounter him. We want to be a church that removes the obstacles. You see, God is already using Bethel in a powerful way. Just two weeks ago, 27 people made a decision to follow Jesus. Last Sunday, 975 people heard the story of the resurrected Jesus as a part of our Sunday services. If you add our online attendance, we had over a thousand people last Sunday exposed to the life-changing news and the goodness of the character of God through Christ's resurrection. God is doing an incredible work. People are experiencing sobriety for the first time in years. People are finding peace where there has been none. I can't wait to see what God will do as we step out all the more boldly. And I believe in this season, God is calling us to bold belief. I believe he's calling you to bold belief and me to bold belief to the people in every pew and every seat, in every phone or every computer 
or TV that, that this message reaches, I believe God is calling you to step all in so that we can work together to remove obstacles so that this incredible mission of real people encountering the real Jesus and experiencing real change can, can absolutely explode throughout this community and throughout the world. One of our primary goals of this season is not that a few of us will step out boldly, but that we entirely as a church will step in boldly. And the amount of sacrifice may not be the same for everyone, but, but I want all of us to step in in a way that is bold for us. Beyond the common, easy solution, but to step in and surrender our life to a life of bold belief. My hope for you and my hope for every person in this church is that we will step in boldly in unity for 100% participation during this five week giving initiative series and then beyond for two years. Why should I step into bold belief you ask? Because God deserves our surrender. What was happening in that room that those men took their friend to was an incredible moment in which mere humans were engaging with the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. God offers the same today through his local church, and he deserves our surrender of our life. God wants our surrender to his call. I should do it because of God, and I should do it because of what God did for me, but I should do it because of the others who need God's healing. There are folks in our community who look in the mirror every day, and, and they wonder if their life can be different. They wonder if there, there's freedom from their addiction and healing from, from their hurt, and they wonder if they'll ever find peace, and there is peace to be found in Jesus, and we need to boldly take that peace to them. We need to do it for a personal self too, because the truth be known, God doesn't just want to encounter us once and begin a transformation. God wants to continue to carry out a transformation. And that transformation happens as we step out boldly. So what are we asking? We're asking for you to seek God's direction personally for how he is calling you to make a two year sacrificial giving commitment for bold belief. We're asking you to be willing to make personal sacrifices. Everyone is for a church making sacrifices for a local community. But in order for us to do this in the way that God has called us to, it's going to take personal sacrifices from every one of us. We're asking for you to act obedient and obediently to God's guidance. Will you listen to God's prompting in your heart, in your life, for what he's calling you to do as a part of Bethel Church. I want you to know, friends, my own family, we're committed to making personal sacrifice. Our staff have been working for months, for many hours on this initiative. Our building planning team, we have worked together tirelessly during this process and are fully committed. Our staff is committed. Our board of directors is committed to help step out boldly. We are not asking you to do something that we are not willing to do ourselves. We believe leaders go first, but by all means, it's going to take all of us to see this happen. In conclusion, I believe God is going to do incredible work through this bold faith initiative. Go back to the passage in Luke chapter five. Just imagine how transforming this moment was. For the people around who were just watching to witness the miracle of what Jesus did that was beyond their power. For the men who carried their buddy up on the roof 
to witness the healing of their buddy. And rather than having to carry their buddy, getting to move along with their buddy because of what God had done. Imagine how this moment empowered them to see problems and become a part of the solution moving forward in their life. Rather than to settle down in a helplessness and a mindset of well, nothing ever changes, they, they were empowered to go forward. And this man himself, formerly unable to do anything for himself, is mobilized to go home and talk about what God had done in his life. Can you imagine the power of this story for his family who had watched him struggle? Can you imagine the power of this story for the community who had walked by him daily and seen his helplessness and wondered, what on earth do we do with this? I believe the same will happen here at Bethel and we'll experience it fully as we step out in bold belief. Are you willing to climb the ladder, tear off the roof, to make personal sacrifice? God is worth it. And he values the community we're in and he values us and will grow all of the three if we step out in bold belief. Over the next five weeks, we'll continue to explore bold belief. Each week's messages will be about how we can step out boldly. Today, I want to encourage you to step out in bold belief and bold surrender to just go ahead and determine that as for me, as for my family, when it comes to this call that God's making on my life, whatever God calls me to do, I surrender to what God calls me to do. Even if it means getting my hands dirty, even if it means giving generously and deeply out of reserves and stores, even if it means uh, a sacrifice on my behalf, I'm surrendered in bold belief. I'm going to live my life believing in the one who is capable of what I am not. The following week, we're going to talk about bold trust and what it looks like to step out in trust. Week three, we're going to talk about bold generosity, and what it looks like to be boldly generous in this process. And then the following two weeks, we're going to talk about bold sacrifice and bold commitment. I'm so excited to see what God will do in this season. Here's some things to remember. Stop by the Crossroads campus and pick up a workbook. You can let us know that, that you're coming. We'll have some out and about so you can pick them up. We can also, you can also pick one up at the desk at our 9 and 1030 service at Deer Meadow. There will be a uh, connection point desk where these materials will be laid there. Anyone who comes to the first three to four weeks of Bold Belief series will, will receive one of these and a commitment card to begin to pray over. Something else I would have you remember over these next few weeks is to find a way to remind yourself to be praying for our church during this season and to be praying about what God would have, how God would have you step out. There are also some prayer dot cards that are going to be available at Connection Point where you can literally put a, a dot on your phone or on your watch. I have one on my watch that every time I see it, it reminds me to pray for what bold call God is making in my life. There's a prayer calendar that will remind you daily of individual things you can be praying about during this season. Our small groups are going to be spending time focused on this same scriptures and these same themes each week so that we can all be unified in this time, unified as, as a church and unified as groups, unified as volunteers and unified as those who consider themselves a part of Bethel church family. This giving initiative is a two year commitment that will begin in June and end in two years in, in June. We're asking for you to, Pray over what God would have you do over the next two years, what you do now and what you choose to do above and beyond, or what one-time gift God is calling you to make. Here's some questions that I want you to ponder as we move forward. Are you fully surrendered to the vision of living with bold belief? Do you want to live life waiting to step out and wondering if you can step out or you want to experience what happens when you step out in faith boldly? 
Have you surrendered to taking a bold step? Often we learn after taking a bold step when we cannot yet see, we learn who God is as we step out. We learn about who God is in a new way. A friend of ours says it this way, it's one thing to agree with something, it's another to surrender to it. Are you ready as a part of our church to step in and be a part of the 100% of our church committed to bold belief? Will you make attendance a priority over these next five weeks as we step from a step out into bold belief into bold commitment? We will be having a commitment Sunday where our hope is that 100% of our church will step up in some form or fashion to make a commitment to see this bold belief initiative come to be. Commitment Sunday is May 5th, 2024. Put it on your calendar. I'm so excited to see what God does and then to celebrate it as we step forward in bold belief. Take time for prayer. Wrestle through the commitment that God wants. My friend, I can't wait to see what happens in our community as we step out with bold belief. And I cannot wait to see what God does with you in yours. I love you, Bethel. Have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, take a moment if you haven't already to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages, you can view the messages from Sunday morning, and you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give with online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved. <laughs>